How you doing? <laughs> Hello ladies and gentlemen. How are you? I'm very well. I'm in the kitchen. Um, and I thought I'd just fire up the camera. I've just come home from work. It's quarter past eight in the evening. I did go to work at eight o'clock this morning as well. So I've put a 12 hour shift to in because I've had to brew. Oh, sorry Reginald. I've had to brew some beer because we've obviously sold out of everything in the shop. Unbelievable. Um, I've got a couple of cans, of course, which I've held back for my own pleasure, as they say. But it has gone swimmingly, and I really have underestimated the amount of beer or the amount of interest that we'd have in the first week. Here's a little bit of a blast from the past. Idle Valley Brewery, or Idle Valley Tap Glass. And I'm going to pour this vacant gesture out just to show you how I'm drinking it at home. So I recommend if you've got any of these beers on the connectors, you know, the four pack or the six pack connectors, we'll stop there. I recommend taking them off before you put them in the uh, in the fridge because they will be disturbed when you snap them off. But there we go. That is the vacant gesture in a glass. So I've seen on a couple of Facebook posts today because I've been tagged in them. I've not been very active on social media recently. I've been so busy uh, but I've seen that quite a few people have received their delivery of uh, Harrison's Brewery beers. Don't mind if I do do you? Oh. So I'm very pleased that they've all arrived in one piece and I'm working as hard as possible to try and make sure that we've got some more in stock for next month. Reggie, give it a break, will ya? So, the plan is, we're going to brew some more vacant and some more proof and we're going to put that into can straight away. I'm going to fill all the tanks up this week, so it's going to be a, an eight day week for me. We're also opening the kitchen again, which is great news, that's happening on Monday, but I'm not going to be able to spend too much time working on the kitchen because I've got to get all this beer ready. You know, everything's coming at once again. So I'm kind of hoping that things fall into place. Head chef Tom, he's going to take care of the kitchen for us and uh, I know it's in capable hands. Stuart is obviously looking after the bar. I don't ever have any worries on that front. Uh, that means that me and Gemma are going to be left to our own devices in the brewery and we're just going to have to brew, brew, brew and then brew some more. So I've ordered some more cans in, I've ordered some more grain, we've got some hops in, I placed an order the other week, I hope there's enough. And my intentions are to brew the vacant and the proof. That's all I think I'm going to do for the past, for the next few weeks. Just so we've got enough stock, you know, to see us through, um, if this is what we're going to call a summer, see us through the summer, you know. And then of course, once I put it into can, when it hits the can, it's usually a minimum of two weeks in the warm room or if it's 18 degrees I'll leave it out ambient, that's fine. Hopefully they'll be conditioned properly. Uh, I'm working on changing the label a little bit, seeing as I'm doing another run to get rid of these paper labels. I think I'm just going to change the design up, particularly on the proof of concept. Uh, I have got that one finished actually, uh, but I want to keep it a secret. So those of you who are label collectors and if they've arrived in good condition on the cans that you may have bought, then save them because uh, they're now limited edition, if you like. So once I've completed eight brews, four vacant and four proof of concept, then I'm also going to this week start on the 4-4 can. Um, I think I touched up on it last video. 
The idea being, I'm going to put together four recipes. We're going to put those recipes on the website so everyone's going to have access to them. Whether they turn out nice or not, you don't have to download them and use them. And then what I'm going to do is brew those four beers up on the pilot kit. And then when they're ready, we're going to put them into can. So that's four beers, four August, all four can. And they will literally be limited edition. My, uh, my reckoning is about 120 cans of each batch of beer. So they'll definitely be a first come first serve kind of thing. And I'm hoping to get them all on the website in one hit so you can buy a four pack. Looking at the shipping, I think we can do some work on the four packs. If people are just buying a four pack to be delivered, I reckon we might be able to bring the cost of shipping down by a pound or two. Looking at shipping around the world, people have asked me if I can ship to the States and to Australia. We've done Portugal, Italy, Sweden, Norway, Netherlands, Ireland, nobody in France or Germany. Um, loads of places. Anyway, the Australian shipping for 12 cans of beer was 101 quid or 107 quid, something ridiculous. And then 12 cans to the States was about 60 odd. It is really expensive because it goes by air mail. And I think the States were going to pull out of a deal with Royal Mail recently or with the um, European uh, mail distribution union or something like that and it meant that the prices have gone a little bit silly but the stuff that's domestic in the UK I'm using a company called Dispatch Bay and uh, they're fantastic now you can either pay over the odds a little bit and have Parcel Force 48 tracked or we can use uh, Dispatch Bay's own service but my only worry is, and I, those of you guys out there who've bought beers the, over the past few days will realise the end point deliverer in this is my Hermes. And I'm not a big fan of them, but I'm told that they're performing much better than they were five years ago when I last used them. So, fingers crossed on that front. Any problems, we'll change it. But for us to keep the postage where we are, 750 flat rate in the UK, I'm afraid this is the service we're going to have to use. Uh, but the good thing is they provide me with a link, an API link to the website. I can import all the label details and everything like that anyway. I don't want to bore you with the deets. Uh, but it just makes my life easier and they pick up from the brewery, which is fabulous. So, if we manage to release all four of these cans in August, from today being, what, the 27th of July, that will massively be an achievement. I'm kind of aiming for the last week, so that means I have to brew these beers this week. Um, I'll be pushing the pilot kit through its paces because I still haven't sorted the boil filter out on it yet. But I did order some parts from GC Stainless yesterday, or this morning actually. And usually they're really good, so I guess they're going to drop on my doorstep on Wednesday. And if they do, that means I'll be able to weld up this big filter that I've got, and a sight glass, and get it up and running. And if that's the case, then we're going to brew on Thursday. So we'll do Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday maybe, depending on what happens with the kitchen. And that means we'll have four different beers in the fermenters for can, which would be great. And anyway, I'm going to swallow this and then I'm going to pour a proof of concept. Let's see how that one's coming out of can. Oh, boys, the vacant really is drinking well. Oh my god, really well. Right, let's see how this goes. So this one wasn't connected to one of the four pack thingies. So I'm hoping it's going to be clear. Because these beers do drop clear now, there's a little haze to it. But they are dropping clear if given time. But we've completely... Oh, I dropped the sediment in there. <laughs> 
well that was a waste of time completely wasn't it yeah we've um, got rid of Isinglass from the brewery it's taken a while and I've had to really figure a few things out with findings we've had a massive mountain to climb with getting the bitter to be clear because that's the only beer that our customers in the brew shed actually care about being clear so that was the last beer to slip over to the um, vegan friendly category if you like but yeah we've got rid of Isinglass out of the brewery we got rid of the last bucket today which just had a bit in the bottom we've not used it for four weeks maybe even eight can't think back how many well certainly not for the last few batches that we've done since lockdown I'm gonna have a drink of this oh that's showing really well oh wow I'm getting the Simcoe off that so yeah no more Isinglass <clears throat> but I've had to do a lot of research so I've actually invested in something called Brewer's Clarity which is an enzyme that you put into your beer at the same time as your yeast and the idea of this Brewer's Clarity is that it removes haze forming particles from the beer as well but it also helps in the reduction of gluten so for all the brewers out there who are selling gluten free beer then this beer is made gluten free by this enzyme in Brewers Clarity. If you go to Murphy and Sons website they've got all the information and the data sheets on there that you're going to need if you want to look this thing up. So our process now is going to be Brewers Clarity added at the same time as the yeast we are then going to ferment the beer and then at the end of fermentation we're going to add Finings Adjunct and we're going to start to chill the beer then we're going to pull our yeast out for harvest then we're going to dry hop then we're going to recirculate then we're going to cask and when we cask we're going to be adding some Browsol P which is another um, silica based Finings agent vegan friendly yet again and hopefully that's enough to take us to the cellar. If we do have any final clarity issues in the beer cellar then I have another brand of findings called Cellabrite in backup and we'll pop that in as well if we need to. So there are three different findings there uh, all of them vegan friendly which hopefully will allow us to get this beer looking bright and I'm hoping the vacant and everything else now we've got this new process in place will start to drop a little bit of that haze it does have a bit of a haze which like I say I don't mind most of our customers don't mind but really I'd like to see it out of the beer because I'm starting to try to refine the process now and streamline it a little bit so fingers crossed that kind of works for us anyway I'm going to wrap it up folks I've spoke about uh, let's have a look on here uh, 15 minutes almost I suppose we're coming up to and I don't want to throw too many subjects into the hat mainly just a quick update to share a beer with you all because I know everybody's bought some from the website and really to say thanks thanks to everybody out there who supported us you should have seen our faces when Gemma and I woke up in the morning and all those orders were in it was amazing we sold uh, almost 2,000 cans of beer in two days um, which absolutely blew me away frankly so we've been really busy packing boxes past couple of days so thanks a lot folks for doing that it really is going to help the brewery get back on its feet after Covid even though we're not over you know over the bridge yet um, I also want to say a massive thanks to all my Patreon supporters who've stuck with me all this way because the video uploads have been quite sporadic and <laughs> you know I suppose I might feel in that position that I wasn't getting value for money but uh, I suppose people know what's going on um, and the fact that you've all stuck by me and supported us throughout this has meant that we can keep the lights on while um, while we're not working while we haven't been working so it really has meant a lot and 
Well, I hope someday to repay you all. If the videos aren't enough, then just pop into the brew shed and share a pint with me. I'm sure that'll uh, be more than dividends. Anyway, folks, thank you very much, and I will see you on the next video. Friggin' chars.